Welcome everyone to the Learning Loop Podcast, your best source for educational insights and trends. I'm Chris, your host. Today's special guest is the one, the only, Adam Welcome. Adam is a world-renowned keynote speaker, podcaster, blogger, and an esteemed educator. Adam is constantly sharing his amazing ideas all over the internet, including his three captivating podcasts. You can find those and so much more at mradamwelcome.com. Adam, it is a pleasure to have you here on the show. Chris, what's up, everybody? Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to uh, to be on the show to talk with everyone today. Let's uh, Let's get going. Let's do this. Let's do this. That's awesome. I love the energy. Can you just kick things off by telling us a little bit about your journey into the field of education? I graduated from college and I literally didn't had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I had a couple short false starts. And then um, I actually got a call from a guy I went to high school with. And he said there was a, a long term substitute job opening at the middle school where I went in the PE department. And I said, you know what, let me do it. And uh, I loved it. And I went and got my credential and taught. And then it was an assistant principal, was a principal, was a director of innovation. And I've uh, just been kind of like going since then. I feel like I feel like my, my life professionally has been a bunch of, just a bunch of doors that have been open that I've walked through or doors that I checked the door to see if it was unlocked or I found the key and I opened it and I just kept walking and going and pushing and just kind of like discovering what was what was out there. And um, it's led me to where I am now. I've been a full-time, you know, I don't know how to even describe me. I'm a keynote speaker. I do professional development. I get to work with educators all over the country. I've worked in 46, soon to be 47 states with school districts and companies like Seesaw and state leadership conferences. And um, and I've been podcasting for 10 years and I blog and I just kind of do all the things. It's uh, It's really fun. I'm very fortunate to be able to do what I do. Amazing. I love just such the breadth of experiences you bring because, you know, not only do you have this amazing platform to be able to share things and the experience to share things, but also the background of having to know what it's like to be a teacher, to be a principal, to be a director and be able to impact people on such a deep level. That's so powerful for you to be able to share that. Yeah. And I also feel too, one thing I forget, I, I'm sorry, I didn't add is I'm a dad. I have an, I have an 11 and a 13 year old. So I feel that perspective also help so much just because I'm there with my kids as they're in fifth grade and middle school and just navigating school life from the outside, which I'll be honest is, is, is challenging at times. Cause I would, you know, oftentimes or sometimes do things differently. Obviously, you know, when you're kind of somebody in the field, it's probably like if you're a physician and you take your child to the doctor, you're like, wait, why are you doing that? You should be doing this and just different perspective. But I think as a whole, it really helps. Um, inform my thought process. Um, and just, it is kind of like the bookend. I did it as an educator and now I'm doing it as a parent. And then I get to kind of go down the middle and, uh, and just do it, um, help everybody else. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good. It's fun. I'm, uh, like, like I said, I'm fortunate and I, I wake up knowing how lucky I am, um, every single day. Absolutely. And that is amazing. I love it. I love the perspective too, as a parent. And I want to lean into that kind of for our next question here. Uh, we value family connection into education so much here at Seesaw. And I know you do too, as you just kind of spoke to that. How can educators today better engage their families to really feel connected to those classrooms and connected to the learning that's happening? Yeah, well, I would first say is you have to be connecting families or guardians or whoever the kids are living with or, or are being raised by um, with the school because when you do, you're going to have a family or a guardian uh, that is more just in touch and connected and more bought into what you are doing in in the classroom, in the school. I, I feel like, you know, lack of information, people come up with their own their own ideas in their head. And the more that you can share, the better. Uh, when I was a principal, most of my teachers used Seesaw. And I'll be honest, so many parents were like, I just love knowing what's happening. Parents are traveling for business. Parents are at work all day. Some parents are working two, three jobs. How do you stay connected? There's that little rectangle in our pockets. They can take out their phone. They can see what's going on. And they also, it is, it's a connection. It's a, it's a conversation starter with their child, with what's going on. Because everybody listening, if you have kids, what is the most common response when you see your kid at the end of the day? How is school today? My son will say, oh, normal, like it was a normal day. 
And obviously as an educator, I'm always trying to think of different questions to bring to them. And maybe I saw something on Seesaw or Instagram or Facebook, or we got an email newsletter or something from the teacher. And it just, it, it just gets more buy-in. Uh, when I was a principal, uh, you know, we were sharing every day. Uh, this was back when Twitter, this was actually long before Seesaw was even a thing. This was back when Twitter, like kind of in the golden years of, of Twitter, and we were sharing every day. And what it did was it brought our strong community together in even a stronger way. It also allowed us to do things or try things that maybe hadn't been done before. And why? It's because adults in the families, they knew what was going on. They were sharing. We were building a strong community. So when we said, hey, we want to do this, more often than not, they were like, go for it. Because we had built trust. Because we had communicated. We were sharing pictures of what was going on. Kids were going home and saying, oh my gosh, guess what I did? And the parents like, I know, I saw that. And then they're having a really deep, meaningful conversation about literacy or math or language arts or or recess or what happened to the lunchroom or an assembly that day. I would, I, I, I used to say if kids get home and parents don't know something about that happened that day, I feel like we're not we're not sharing enough. And I know teachers, you're thinking, gosh, I have so much to do. Adam, Chris, what are you talking about? Like, I don't have time for this. And I would say, hey, put put kids in charge on some level. We started a program at my school called Social Media Interns. And what it was is I just gave kids an iPad and they went around and they took pictures of what they saw at school. And then we would post them on our social media pages or they would mash it up into uh, an iMovie. Or they would post it on Seesaw or whatever. I mean, I know schools that use WhatsApp communities. You can put it on WhatsApp. I mean, there's so many different ways out there to do it. Think about your communication strategy. Look at what else is happening. Um, you know, if you want some really great ideas, make sure you sign up for the Connect conference that is happening this summer. There are so many really, really great presenters. I'm keynoting the conference. Mark your calendars, August 2nd. I'm sure the link is floating around on this podcast episode. So you can go, oh, you're doing it like that. That's not going to work perfectly for us, but I can take 20% of what you're doing and make that work for my community. And that's how you get started. Share, 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 and build those strong relationships, which in turn builds a really strong community. For sure. And the one piece I want to pull out from what you said there is also make it really meaningful, you know, make it purposeful in, in connecting people and in a way that's going to spark conversations or questions even so that you don't have students who come home and you say, how was your day today? And they say, it was good. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Like you pass the one word responses <laughs> using pictures, videos, any kind of media that you can uh, and allow kids to do it. I absolutely love that idea. Well, and, 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 and just one more thing, too, with that being said, Chris, school has changed so much since we were in school. You know, I was in school in the, in the late 80s and 90s, and the, it's changed. The world has changed. So if you're not an, if you are not an educator or have been an educator, you're, you're pulling on your experience, which in a lot of ways, not in all ways, but in a lot of ways, it's an outdated experience. So you're coming at it from kind of an archaic, antique <laughs> uh, point of view. So that's why it's even more imperative for schools, teachers, principals, counselors, bus drivers. Hey, if you're the bus driver, you could be starting these conversations and talking about things for kids to talk about with their parents. Tie it back to the curriculum. Tie it back to experiences. Tie it back to social social situations that kids are going through so then they can, in turn, talk about it with their parents so they can just be a better human being in school but also in the community. Absolutely. Using the network that's around them to their best advantage. I love it. Uh, you did mention uh, the Connect Conference, which I do want to jump into next. Uh, we are beyond thrilled to have you being our keynote for the Connect Conference happening in August. Um, if you want to get the link, it's just connect.seesaw.me. We'll have that also linked here at the bottom in the description for you to go to. Uh, but I just want to prime the pump here. Can you just share a little inspiration behind your keynote that you're going to be delivering? Kids deserve it for the Connect Conference. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm super stoked for this summer in the Connect Conference. I always like to say everybody's gonna laugh. Some people are gonna cry. We're gonna pull on your emotions. We're gonna give you some ideas that you can go and take for uh, for your classroom or your school when school starts in a couple of weeks or three weeks after the conference, whenever you're starting. Uh, it's all about kids, creativity, innovation, and just that push to get started. I feel like so many people have ideas and they just don't know how to get started. And the best way to get started is to simply try the thing, to take a risk, to put your kids in charge. You don't need to be the expert in it. You know, you talked about having a purpose in in strategies earlier, Chris, and 
I'm really big on everything that we do has to have a purpose. So I'm just going to remind you, we're going to talk about all the things. Why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? And how does it connect to the world that our kids are growing up in? If you're a TK teacher, if you're a high school teacher, you know, it doesn't matter. The world is changing at such a rapid pace. We have to be talking about those things. We're 87 days away from the conference. It's not too early to get registered. Devil and Jackson, Brittany Tarr, James Radburn, just to name a few, Kelly Mitchell, Brianna Duran, Cheryl Miyake. I mean, the lineup is awesome. Adam Hill, who I know is an international educator, uh, is going to be there. Cheryl Carter, Ashley Marker, Katie Clip, Jason Peters, Stephanie Kleinholder, and so many more. Sign up, connect us, Seesaw. Dot me, you're going to be rejuvenated. You're going to be inspired. You're going to be reminded why you're doing this amazing job called educator. And we're going to drop, drop some ideas that connect to the curriculum that I guarantee you can implement on the first day, the first week, the first month. And engagement is going to be up. Behavior is going to be down. And kids are going to hopefully be running into school. I can't wait for school to start or I can't wait for tomorrow which to me is what I want with my kids when they come running home off the bus. Guess what we did today? Oh my gosh, I can't wait for school tomorrow. Uh, you know what? That's what we want. Let's make the best day of school ever for our kids. Connect.seesaw.me. I hope to see you there virtually. We're 87 days away. Sign up. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. And I love to, uh, you know, what you spoke to is make it the best day ever. I think you know, as educators, we, we sometimes can get bogged down by we have so much curriculum, we have so much other things to do. But if you really focus on the foundation of, I just want to make it these kids best day ever today, tomorrow, the next day, then everybody is going to enjoy their year, their week, their day together, uh, and really just come out of it potentially learning more as they kind of uh, just found focus on the basics. Let's just go down to the basics. Let's make it the best day ever. And then we'll move on to tomorrow. Yep. Agreed. Love it, love it. Um, I want to jump to kind of a, a reflection question for you. Uh, you've been a classroom teacher, a principal, a director. Thinking back to all of your experience in education, uh, can you just share maybe a success moment that you had that really helped to shape your educational philosophy and one that has really helped to drive your direction that you're going today? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm kind of laughing. I, I didn't mention at the beginning, my dad also was a teacher. My dad taught second grade for 35 years. So I definitely grew up in his classroom and he was a very innovative teacher before I would say innovation was kind of even a buzzword and a thing. And, you know, I would say my, my first few years as a teacher were very, well, very important to, to where I am now. I, I remember, I just remember looking at my class. I taught third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. And I remember that first year, second year, I remember looking at them and going through the lessons that maybe I had prepared and I had collaborated with, with my, with my grade level colleagues. And I remember looking at them and I had this conscious thought. I'm like, they're, they're bored. This is not engaging. This is not fun. They were doing the work in quotes because, because they were compliant kids. And, you know, we had a good relationship because I would go to eat lunch with them in the cafeteria and I would play with them on the, on the playground. So they, you know, that th we had a good relationship. But I remember, I'm like, this is this is boring. Kids are not going to remember school. They're not going to be excited to be lifelong learners. And it was then that I just decided I am going to be I'm going to be different. I want to be different. And that's really when Kids Deserve It started. It was that was Kids Deserve It before there actually was a Kids Deserve It. I wanted to do it because kids deserve it. Kids deserved to have an engaging classroom. That was fun. But what, while they also were building relationships and they were connecting with their peers and they were going deep with the curriculum and I could, I had the ability to, to differentiate with all 30 of my students because I was teaching one way. And if you teach one way, you're probably only teaching about 30% of the kids that are kind of right in the middle. You're not reaching kids that maybe have IEPs, 504s, English learners, gifted and talented educationally. That's an at-risk population as well, too. So, you know, there's tons of ways we can talk about and classify kids. Just basically, if you have 30 kids, if you're in secondary, you have 120. If you only teach one way, you're, you're not teaching all of your students. It's like, Chris, if you and I go, go golfing, I'm a horrible golfer. Maybe you're a great golfer and there's 10 other people in our golf lesson and the golf pro only is teaching one way. Well, you're not going to get anything because you're way over here because you're a really good golfer. And I'm all the way over here. I can barely putt. I don't even know what club to choose. 
the, that golf pro has to be able to differentiate. And that's when I really started thinking and reading about project-based learning. And I really wanted to make my classroom different and more open and organic. And we would, we built a garden out in front of my school, out in front of my classroom. And we did a, we built a park bench and I took the kids outside to learn. And we would bring this subject into that subject. So with all that being said, when I became a, an administrator and a principal, I was like, all right, I'm going to be the unprincipal. And I wanted to be completely different. I remember my principal and he used to smoke a pipe in the office. You know, you know, the times have changed, but hey, again, our world is different. And now every year is kind of like 10 years in our childhood years because of technology and artificial intelligence and information. We have to be changing and different and differentiating for 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 the sake of our kids. Um so I would say it would say I would say that and then Coupled with, I almost didn't graduate from high school. I actually didn't even know I was going to graduate until the week of graduation. I was completely, I, I, I had the ability academically. I was just a very disengaged student. I'm not a worksheet person and no kid ever raised their hand and said, can I have another worksheet, please? I, I just didn't, I didn't learn that way. Um, so I think it was that experience in high school, my first couple of years teaching and also just looking at my students. It was a very unofficial survey. I'm like, gosh, Chris, he looks bored. This is not okay. I want to create a better experience for Chris and for all the other kids. And that's really just kind of what has paved the way for for my entire career. Absolutely. I, I love you reflecting on that too. And I think so much of what you said resonated with me also in that, you know, when, when we think of some of the best educators out there, when we think of some of the people who are really pushing the limits like yourself, they often think back to the experience that they would want to have as a yep. student. And if they sat in that classroom, like, would I be enjoying myself if I was teaching in this way? And if I was a student learning this way? Um, and so I think you just hit a whole bunch of, you know, bells in my head of like, those are moments that I wish I could reframe. And I wish that I could teach in a different way. And one that I know my students would, you know, come to the conclusion that this was the be best day ever. And we can leave this and move forward and continue to learn uh, together. So yep, yep. love how those uh, experiences really shaped your philosophy and also having a parent as an educator that often, you know, helps you know, also continue to sculpt that as you go too. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Awesome. We get two more quick questions here, Adam. Um, I want to ask you next, our loopy question. This is just a silly question. We ask all of our guests here. If you're at an amusement park, what rides do you have to go on? And what rides are you going to absolutely avoid? <laughs> you do not want to be on a roller coaster with me because I'm going to barf. I'm going to be I'm going to be sick. I was like 10 years old and we were in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. My grandmother had a house on a lake out there and we were on a roller coaster. It was my brother. I was in the middle my mom on the right. And it was like this lobster uh, roller coaster that went all around. And I remember barfing over my mom. And so I will definitely not be going on roller coasters. You know, the ride that I have to, I probably have to go on the log ride because my kids would want to go on the log ride and I want to, I want to go build those memories with them. So no upside down, fast roller coasters. My brain could not handle it, but I would, uh, I definitely would go, go on the log ride with my kids, hopefully on a hot day, cause you're going to get wet and it doesn't feel good to get wet on a, on a cold day. So on a hot day, let's go on the log ride for sure. That sounds excellent. And you get a good thrill with that too. It's not that you're missing <laughs> out on it, but yeah. still, uh, still have the opportunity to enjoy the experience as well. This is our, our final question here, Adam. If there's anybody listening and maybe they're a new educator, they're they're new to the field, they're potentially even new to, you know, Seesaw or just really wanting to implement technology in the right way. Um, I want to kind of ask you a, a futuristic question here for anybody listening, if they want to kind of dive in and tap into something. What is something new that's happening in education that you as an expert out there, you're really trying to keep your eye on and make sure that, you know, you're you're seeing this at be something that's going to positively impact education? Yeah, I, everybody listening might be thinking I'm going to say artificial intelligence, uh, but, I, but I'm not. And, I, you know, by the time we're recording this and by the time it comes out, there's going to be a new technology that has already come out and just the just the lag time if it's a couple of days or a week from the recording. So I would just say, you know, you can't you can't keep up on all the things. Yeah, it's it's changing so fast. And what I would say to everybody out there, especially those new teachers, is really, really think is what I'm doing right now, whatever the technology is as a as an adult, as the teacher or with my students, because I look I really look at it as two roads. There's you from like the behind the scenes, the back end, organizing, grading, all that stuff. And then there's you with your students. What is the purpose of you doing that thing? I would say that's the first question. Like, why are you doing it? Don't just do it because it's cool. 
It's got to have a purpose. And then the second question is, how is you doing that thing, bringing your students to a place academically, socially, college career ready, whatever it is, that you could not have brought them if you didn't have the thing? And I just see, I think I see too many educators trying to do things with tech because it's quote unquote cool. And the cool factor to me, that was 15 years ago when tech was just kind of coming out. It's got to have a purpose. It's got to make an impact. It's got to, it's got to give you 30 minutes more free time a week. And that's the whole, that's the, that's the road on the left that helps you with the back end with grading or lesson planning or whatever that might be. So just think really big, but try to act really small and make sure you pace yourself with whatever it is. Uh, I've long thought and said the attainable has to be sustainable. So if you're listening to this and you're going to be a brand new teacher next year or a second year teacher or a new administrator, can you keep doing this, whatever you're doing in six months or in two years at the pace that you're doing right now? And the best analogy that I have is running a marathon. I've run 32 marathons, Chris, and I I can run a six minute mile, but I can't run a six minute mile for 26.2 miles. And that's the analogy. I have to pace myself because if you start sprinting at six minute miles in August, you're not going to be sprinting in September, October, for sure, November, January, February, March, April. You're going to be burned out. You're going to be sick. You're going to be like, I don't know if this career is for me. So start, start slow, taper, which is a running term for just go a little bit slower. Say, hey, is this still relevant? What can I do? What can my students do with this? Can I give them something? Can I collaborate? with a colleague, grade level, department person in a deeper way so you're not both doing the same work. The attainable has to be sustainable. There are times throughout a school year where it's busier, slower, busier, slower. We get those little blips, but you can't be sprinting because you're going to burn out. You're going to get tired. You're going to get sick. You're going to have relationship problems in your life because you're going to be at work all the time. So those are just some uh, non-definitive answers and things to think about. Whatever the technology is you're using and Everybody should be using Seesaw because it's such a user-friendly technology to use that has a really, really, really big impact with your community and with your parents. But also think about the other things. Can I keep doing this? What is the purpose? Think big, act small, and don't forget to smile and don't forget to laugh because you get to hang out with kids. People are in cubicles somewhere processing paperwork. You get to be in a classroom and you get to go outside with kids. So enjoy every day. Absolutely. I, my favorite part of what you said there, I loved all of it. My favorite part also was uh, saving those instructional minutes. You know, I, I put on my technology coaching head there and I was like, yes, <laughs> like if you're if you're being efficient with your instructional minutes and the tools that you're choosing to use, then everybody wins. And mostly you and your students get to win because you're having more time to be able to really get to that point of differentiated instruction, personalized learning and be there learning with the kids also yep. at your fingers. Yeah, Love it. 100%. Well, Adam, we're at time. I just want to give you a huge thank you here for coming. Huge thank you for just joining us on an early podcast, uh, not only to kind of preview you as a professional, as an expert, but also to kick off Connect. We do have you coming in for our keynote. This is happening in August. If you're listening to this, you can register at connect.seesaw.me. We would be so honored to have you join our free virtual conference. We're having Adam, as you just heard, be our keynote. We are beyond excited for him to join. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Adam. Bye.